So there we go, nice smooth swing, 195 total carry distance with a seven iron. Players ask me all the time, how do you hit it so far with what looks like so little effort? Well, the answer is very simple. The answer is we can get very easy speed through getting proper lag in the downswing. And then of course, unloading that lag. Now, the big hiccup that you're probably getting into when you're working on lag is a ton of different things. There's things where, hey, I can get lag, but my wrist cups a lot. Or I can get, uh, you know, I can try to get lag when I, in my practice swings, but I end up casting it. Well, if you understand how this works the proper way, it becomes much more simple. So I'm very excited to share a drill that I do with a lot of my online students that shows you exactly how lag works in a short swing. The thing is, is lag works exactly the same in a short swing as it does a full swing. And if you understand it in a short swing, it becomes much more easy to see in the full swing. So let's go over the short swing first. And what's great about doing a short swing and doing anything like this, and what I really like to do when I'm teaching is making sure we have very solid reference points and very certain levels, things that we can tangibly see in our mind while we're working on our swing. And one of those big things when we're working on lag is understanding where the club head is or hands and then something else in, in relationship to those. So that may seem a little bit difficult, but stick with me here. It becomes very simple very quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line right on my hips. So we can think about this being our belt line. And we're gonna learn lag from a half swing so that we can put it into a full swing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this club halfway back. So hands are gonna stay just below the belt line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come forward and we're going to lag the club. If we think about our waistline, the club head and the hands, and, we'll, and we think about how this works, we're gonna think as the hands go forward, we're going to get this club head to go above the belt line. That's gonna be the sensation. Now let me show you what happens when the hands don't move forward and I'm lagging the club. If my hands are here and they don't move forward, the club is going to go up into the air. You can see I can do this while curling my knuckles down. I can do this while cupping. Ideally, we wanna curl those knuckles down while getting this lag so that we can come in with a square face like we talk about in the move section on the course. But if we get the club head to go up, then it's easy to see. Where we don't see this is when the, the hands are about parallel, or so the hands are here, and we move the hands forward, because what appears to happen is the club head doesn't do anything at all. So that's the, some of the trickery in our mind that we don't see. So you can see here, if my hands don't move forward, we can see the club head go up. If my hands do move forward, we don't see that club head move very much. That's the subtlety of lag, and that's one of the big starters that I'm having a ton of success with my students on where they're getting the sensation of lag in the downswing. So we can utilize understanding where the hands are, where the club head is, and how that works. So now that we understand how this is gonna work, so we have our waist, our, our line on our belt line, we've got our club head here, we know this club head is going to go above the belt line as the hands are going forward. So they, we're gonna be getting this little lag move in the swing. Once we have that sensation, now we can start throwing that into some swings. So I highly recommend starting with some dry swings here first. Go up to the top, as the hands come forward, get that club head to feel like it stays above the belt line as we unturn. And you're gonna see that we can start to develop some room to get some forward shaft lean, get that easy speed. There's a lot of great things that happen from this, but we're gonna focus in on the lag. So we're gonna go here, as the hands come forward, the club head's going to feel like it goes up. And now, the good sensation is feeling like this club head stays above the belt line as long as it can. You'll see if, unless you, if you don't hold it, that club will kind of naturally want to unload into the ball. So let's hit a little shot like this where I'm gonna get the, the club head to feel like it's going above the belt line as the hands are going forward. So we can see there, nice lag on the downswing and compression. Now the cool part about this is now we've got a good grasp on how we lag the club in a half swing, this is exactly how it happens in the full swing. So all we have to remember here is that position when we get into that, the hands parallel to the ground. And when we come up to the top of the swing, we're gonna think about that same position. As the hands are gonna go forward, this move that we have with the wrist where the knuckles are curling down and we're lagging, we're gonna do that same move at the top of the swing as the hands go forward. So just like in the half swing, as the hands go forward, at the top of the swing, as the hands go forward, that's when we get the lag on the downswing. That is such a big deal, I can't even describe understanding that visual. I'm gonna go over that one more time so we have a very clear visual for this. We are going to curl those knuckles down, lag the club so the club head's gonna go above the belt 
as the hands go forward. When we go up to the top of the swing, we have that same move. As the hands go forward, that club head is going to go up. So again, if I don't move my, if I don't move my hands, the club head goes up. If I go to the top of my swing, if I don't move my hands, club head's gonna go up. And in this case, because we're at the top of the swing, it's gonna go more down. So as you can see from the down the line view, this is going to be curling down. So you can see that club face squaring up. Then up at the top of the swing, it's going to be squaring up. Same exact move. Now, let's do one more little half swing, and then we'll show you how we do it here in the full swing. I'm gonna to have to get that sensation that the club head's staying above the belt. Okay, nice little compressed draw right there. Very, very nice. Had a lot of lag, got a lot of energy into that ball. So that ball carried 100 something yards and I barely swung at it at all because of the lag that we can put into it. Now, just a quick bonus, just cause I'm thinking about it here real quick. It's also a great shot to learn while you're training this. You can see you can hit really low, nice shots out of trees if you need to. But if you do this next move correctly, you're gonna be in the trees a lot, lot less. So we're gonna take that same sensation Hands moving forward, we're gonna go up to the top of the swing, had that club lag nice at the top just like we did in the half swing, now that we have a good understanding for it. And utilize that nice easy speed it gives us. So as you can see right there, I tugged that one just a little bit, but 209 carry distance, 228, that was absolutely pounded. I tell you what, when I start working on and I'm doing instruction on lag, it's unbelievable how much my numbers go up. I should probably work on this a lot more myself, but that speed is just ridiculous. That's a lot more than I normally try to hit this club on the course, but I'm telling you, when I'm doing this right now, I can feel how that lag is releasing into the ball, and I'm telling you, once you get a good sensation for this, you're gonna feel the same thing. I see this with students every single day when they send me an email and they're like, wow, I can't believe how much further I'm hitting the ball because of how much energy this transfers into. So let's go ahead and try this one more time, see if we can get a nice straight one. Now there we go, started right on my target line, drew just a little bit, and that's you know probably gonna be 10, 20 feet left of my target. That's gonna be really good, especially from you know 204 carry distance, 220 total yardage. It's, it just doesn't get much better than that. And the great thing about it is once you start feeling it, it's hard to unfeel it and you can get right into it. But now remember, getting that lag is just the first piece of the equation. If we are not showering the club out correctly while lagging the club and squaring it up at the bottom, with that lag, that speed is gonna be sent in the wrong direction. So it's gonna be vitally important to make sure that we are getting this move down correctly. Well, I've got a great bonus for you. Head instructor and owner Clay Ballard has a great lesson called the anti-roll method that shows you exactly how to do those two things. So we do wanna shallow the club, we do wanna square it up, but we wanna do so with that lag sensation. So if you couple up the understanding that we talked about in this lesson with the anti-roll method, you will have the recipe of everything you need to hit really solid crisp, sh crisp shots just like this and the great part about it, again, it feels and looks effortless, and you're gonna love how it comes off the club face. So you can see that entire lesson by clicking on the link that pops up in the preview that we're gonna play at the end of this video. That's gonna pop up in the iCard. If you don't see that, that's okay. You can click on the link in the description below, and we'll see you here in the anti-roll method. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep, and that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters, and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this, there's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, You'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there...